Good morning, West USA. Welcome to what we now refer to as the West USA podcast. Oh. Hey, a month later. Thanks, All right. Maggie. We are now officially a, a podcast. I'm a podcaster. Ooh, ooh, wow. Check me out. Does that out. mean we're influencers? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite yet. <laughs> oh. uh, but appreciate everybody uh, joining us today. Uh, a little uh, happy, happy New Year's yeah, to happy everybody. New Year. And um, hopefully everybody's off to a great start. But we got a sneak peek of what we got coming up today. Of course, uh, Tom Menard here is going to give us a look at the December numbers. Matt Baker with the Bookspan Baker team is going to give us our mortgage minute. And uh, we're going to not do a three-pack today, but we are bringing in our president and CEO, Clint Fouts, who's going to join us today uh, for his annual State of the Brokerage Address. So looking forward to seeing what he has to say. So with that being said and done, as always, if you got any comments or questions, please feel free to email us at webinar at westusa.com, and uh, we will uh, help you out in any way that we can. Uh, some announcements. If you have not attended uh, the agent orientation it is not too late we have one coming up this morning at 10 30 if you want some information on how to find that all you got to do is go on to your dashboard uh, go to the calendar and you can get signed up for it so for those of you that have been with West USA and have never had an opportunity to attend or you're brand new to West USA uh, we're going to go through all the things that we have to offer you here at West USA. All right, so we have a uh, house war. So we got a special class coming up Tuesday, January 10th. That is tomorrow. So that is going to be at the Palm Valley Community Center in uh, in Goodyear. So make sure that you uh, get uh, signed up for that. We also have happy hours. Is this our first happy hour of the Ooh. year, Nick? Uh, no, actually, Mesa had their happy hour on Friday, and there was almost 30 agents there. They're overachievers. I love that. Yeah. All right. So this is uh, so this is coming up at Big American Bar and Grill coming up this Wednesday from 4:30 to 6:30. This is for the Arrowhead office, of course. All happy hours and all events are open to all agents and at West just USA. Really quick, Mikey, on this one. So Cassie Roberson, who was with West USA for 22 years, wow. um, it's going to be her farewell to Cassie. Cassie is going to uh, try out some new opportunities. So we just want to invite anyone who's been at the Arrowhead office or may know Cassie to join us this Wednesday. It's going to be a fantastic night. All right. Very Todd's cool. got his uh, first CE. Is this your first one of the year? Second. Second one of the year. Well, <laughs> Mikey apparently around. took the first week off last yeah. week. So, yeah. Where was I last week? All right. So Todd's got three hours of contract law coming up this Wednesday from 9 to 12. This is a virtual class. All right. We have our Kierlin office a meeting coming up in person this Wednesday from 10 to 1130 featuring our uh, managing broker, Dean Becker. Uh, and then we have the Awatuki office meeting coming up Thursday. I guess Dean is making the round. Yeah. So we're going to have Dean Becker and Dale Stauffer from My Found Agent this Thursday from 1030 to 1130 at the Awatuki uh, office meeting. And uh, f hey, listen, new year, old you, okay. let's make it a new you. Let's get some new headshots, <laughs> especially for those of you that have like my headshot right there at the yeah. bottom left hand screen. That's many years old, yeah, probably not a true reflection <laughs> of, uh, you know, but, but I age well. So I don't, you know, so maybe a new headshot for me as well. The perception is important, <laughs> but that is coming up $20 per person at the surprise office. But the way these work, uh, people come in and out. There's going to be a lot of people who sign up for these. So make sure you get signed up. Just don't show up. So that's this G Thursday, January 12th from 10 to 1. So get your new headshot. All right. Uh, Sue Fluky and company. Uh, we've got a new, uh, well, not a new class, but they do this class. It's an incredible class. Essential yeah. Learning Contract to Successful Closing. Perfect class for those of you that are brand new to real estate or those of you not familiar with the whole process. Uh, great information. What I love about this class, you're going to get a lot of information because you have to be able to sit down and explain the process, especially to your buyers. So I guess this is going to be a Zoom class. So uh, again, go to the dashboard, look for the calendar, and you can get signed up this Friday from 10 to 11 
30. All right. And then so uh, so brought back by popular demand. We did this uh, class. My lovely bride wrote this uh, great book, <laughs> just finishing it. So she doesn't know that yet. <laughs> she, I think she thinks I already read read, read the book. <laughs> uh, but uh, well, we are going to uh, be coming to the Scottsdale office uh, this Wednesday, January or not this Wednesday, but Wednesday, January 25th. As those of you know, that Scottsdale office seating is truly, truly limited. Uh, and so uh, we are going to give uh, away 25 books to the first 25 people wow. who uh, sign up and show up. So uh, so this is a chance to get a free book, but you must RSVP to be a candidate for the free book. So uh, there's the link down there at the bottom. Um, all you can do is you know just get signed up for it. It's not on the calendar quite yet, but we'll take care of that in the yeah. next couple days. So you want to get signed up for that. And as always, every Monday afternoon, don't do that with Bob Stevens from 2 to 2.30. All right, Todd, what is going on in the market these days? Well, the new slides aren't catching up for some reason. A little bit of uh, overlap there, but uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be going over the Greater Phoenix Metropolitan Market Statistics for the week ending Monday, January 9th, uh, and we are not going to be going over the December month end totals. Those will be at a separate uh, webinar that we'll be doing right after this one. So let's get right into our numbers. 70 days closed on market, 5.65 months supply. That's that's not an error. 17.7% absorption rate. Our average list price is at 701,000. Our average sale price at 523,000. And our list price to sale price retention at 96.72. Looking at active inventory, this is it's been about three weeks since we have done the last webinar uh, and it provided you with the market statistics. And over that particular time, we've dropped from 19,000 listings all the way down to 16,900. So again, the inventory is continuing to contract amidst lower people still in the marketplace, 2,539 people under pending, and closed units is obviously way too early in the month to have anything happen there. Take a look at new listings. We took 1,427 listings. What's my favorite number? 2,400. So we're a little bit behind from that perspective as well. Days on market at 112. Days on market for closed at 70. What's happening to the prices and the price ranges out there? Well, that five under $500,000 category that's always represented 72% of our entire MLS uh, was back up close to 62% prior to the end of the year uh, and now is back down to 58%. That means there's a, a, you know fewer, obviously, uh, homes available under $500,000. But this gives you an idea by price range exactly what the units are and those days on market for those particular price ranges. And then finally, what does that price range do to represent as a percentage of the total MLS inventory? So that's kind of how this, this little section works. The $500 million price range is sitting at 30.6%. Six percent. Uh, that is again uh, a little slower in the marketplace than it was uh, prior to the end of the year. And a million dollars and up is sitting at ten point nine. That's pretty. Uh, consistent. However, finally getting back into that 120 to 145 uh, days on market where it has always been. Looking at the spreadsheet, this gives us the ability to compare. When you look at that first sheet, that's great for consumers, but you need to have an ability to be able to explain it. Or if you have that analytic high C consumer, this is a great sheet for them. In the very center, you'll notice we moved away finally from 2019. No real reason to talk about that anymore. 2021, 2022, and then to the numbers to the left, uh, uh, same week periods, of course, and then the numbers to the left of the week over week analysis. So 1427, that's actually, a, you know, it, it is a, almost a thousand units off of where we need to be. All the rules of thumb are way over there on the right on the left hand side of the slide if you're looking at that. But if you take a look at last year, we, we took 1746 listings over the same period. So we're a little bit behind last year. However, in 2021, which was a full COVID time, uh, we only took 402. So 1427 looks pretty good, but against 1746 year over year, we're a little behind. Uh, 16,942 is where we're at as far as active inventory. As you can see, just on the 19th, we were at 18,243. It's good. It's a good number because we are way above last year at 6,455 units. Uh, however, we need to keep this close to 20,000 or we're going to have a problem come uh, spring. 14, uh, 448 of those are coming soon properties. 13,790 is single family non-distress. That's where the contraction happened. 2,573 builder properties and 16,898 non-distressed overall. Looking at uh, distressed inventory because there's still people who believe this, this is 
is going to just, you know, be a big part of our, our game. It's not, uh, but we're, this just shows you where we are as far as inventory for distressed properties is concerned. Again, the big issue, the big issue is right here, 2,539 pending units, people that are in escrow, uh, whether they're accepting backup offers or contingent offers, uh, they're in escrow, 2,539. This is at any point in time. So when we report it next week, it'll be at the time we do that, that uh, spreadsheet that day, uh, but it always averages above 3,000 typically. I mean, last year we were at 3,963. Back in 2021, we had 4,694 people under contract. And what we use this for is identifying the number or percentage of buyers in the marketplace. When this number goes down, it means buyers and sellers are not are, are not coming to a meeting of the minds. It could be that the, well, it is typically <clears throat> that the uh, buyers are afraid. There, there's some fear there. What's going on? What's happening? Should I wait? Should I not wait? We're going to talk about some of those things today uh, in the, uh, when we have speak, <laughs> excuse me, when we hear from our leader, Clint Fouts. Uh, but 2,539 is, is far too few. We need to get that into that 3,500 range. Uh, and the only way we can do that is by making sure we communicate the right information to consumers. 774 properties currently closed closed, trailing last year's numbers a little bit. Looking at month's supply, when you don't have the number of buyers in the marketplace consuming properties, even if you are adding fewer properties to the MLS than you should be, the problem is the month supply creeps up. Now, that's a good thing from a buyer's perspective, bad thing from a listing perspective. If you're a selling agent, right, a listing agent right now, uh, you know, you're scrambling. You're trying to find out, you know, wait a minute, I took the listing, I put it in the MLS. What do you mean it isn't sold 47 seconds later? So this is a big problem where you'll see in days, uh, days on market, we're finally at that equilibrium point. 17.7% absorption rate. Our average list prices are at 701,000 average Sales prices at 523, um, and again, those numbers are pretty good. Last year, we fi we finished off at about a 530 something. So prices are settling just that little bit. Uh, days on market sitting at 112. But here's the thing: sold days on market right here, 70. Look at the number to the left, 70. This is what we've been looking for. This was as low as 23. So, <laughs> good you know, old days. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, yeah, during COVID. Um, so again, if you know, if you're new to the, if you've been in real estate for the last three years, those are the numbers you're used to. But 70 is normal. This is uh, I've been tracking this since 1995, and I can tell you that 70 uh, has been the at those rules of thumb to the left have been the averages of the appropriate equilibrium market uh, as we move forward. 96.72. It's not as get this, not as high as we'd like it. We'd like it at 97.8, which means the list price to sell price retention is at the time the seller accepts the offer, what was the list price? Not the original list price, but the list price at that time. And then what's the difference? What is that percentage difference? How much retention was there? So when you see 96.7%, you're saying that the seller negotiated 3.3% on that particular transaction off the list price at the time the property was accepted. That doesn't mean they were at their all-time high list. It just means at the time it was accepted. Accepted. So if this isn't 97.8, closer to 98%, uh, we have a problem. The sellers are giving away too much money in order to make that property sell. And everybody goes, well, that's what buyers want. Yeah, unless you're the listing agent. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I want to I just hover on uh, just the, the actives for a second. Okay. Obviously, December, we, we typically don't take Correct. as many listings. And, and typically the first two weeks of January, we're, we're starting to ramp up. Yeah. Are you anticipating, I'm anticipating, but I'd like to get your thoughts, uh, even though the, the number of actives are, are have dropped considerably over the last 30 to 40 days, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking these numbers are going to be way different come yeah. the end of January. Absolutely. You know, and that's a really good point, Mike. Uh, the reason that we're moving the, mar the month end stats and my 2023 forecast out of the webinar today and moving it into its own thing is just because, you know, obviously we have our illustrious leader coming in, but um, more importantly, it's just too much information as a garden hose being fired at everybody in yeah. five and a half minutes. So we're really going to slow down. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, the forecast for the marketplace. Once I get those done, we'll put them on, the, you know, put them on each of the closed Facebook groups. But to specifically answer your question, Mike, you're, that's why I show the same week last year and, and the same week the year before is because this gives us an ability to reflect. 1,746 people last year in, on this week listed their, their property. This year was only 1,400. 300 difference, yeah, but to your point, some people just aren't yet in the, in the new year. 
And as soon as they do, by the end of the month, uh, that's pretty much where we'll be. All righty. I appreciate it. As always, uh, interesting stuff. So please be on the lookout for uh, Todd's uh, end of the end of the end month of the and, yeah. and end of the year uh, presentations on, on social media or on our Facebook groups. All right. Let's bring in uh, Matt Baker. Matt, happy new year. Happy new year. So let's, right. uh, let's jump right into the market. You know, interest rates have improved week over week, which is a which is a good sign. You know, one of the things that happened last week, actually, was Thursday, the jobs number came out. And w- when you have a headline that that seems rosier than the real meat uh, <laughs> generates, well, of all those job creations, almost half were for second jobs, part time jobs. Well, if you just look at the headline, you're really not going to get the the true story. And that actually ironically is helping mortgage rates improve yeah when when college kids come home and get a two week job at at the you know at Ross just for christmas break that's not really a new job right right no <laughs> exactly and and a lot of people look at that and think headline think oh that means that economy is still really strong and so so when they really peel back the layers mm, nah, not ex- so much. not as much as you would think and and that's actually a good thing because it indicates that we are in that recession that we've been talking about and if that's the case then rates will improve over time. And I'll, I'll show you a good slide uh, to reference here in a second. But but this is where rates are, again, firmly in the mid sixes, and they're improving every day um, this last week. So so that's a, a good a good sign. But let's talk about the new year and the new opportunities. And one of the things I wanted, I, I found this, I just thought it was really interesting. One in four people give up their New Year's resolutions after just one week. So we're, we're in the second week of the year, uh, first Monday of the year. So, so maybe there's still hope for you uh, if, you haven't, <laughs> if you haven't given up on that. Uh, one in three will leave a brand they love after just one bad experience. Um, and then on the other hand, seven in 10 say that they've spent more money to do business with a company that delivers great service. And then when you drill down into that further, according to the Harvard Business Review, if a consumer that rated companies 10 out of 10 for their experience, spent 140 wow. percent more and remained loyal for up to six years. And for all of us that sort of struggle with the the, the repeat business, I'll just leave you with uh, that it, it's that stop calling them your past client. Yeah, they're your client and they're your client for life. And in real estate, makes I mean probably even more so than just a transactional you know other transactions. I mean the real estate transaction should be a lifelong commitment. When you think of it that way, so yeah. um, go, go to the the next slide. Oh, there's my takeaway, right? All clients are forever, and so you know whether they're your before, you know pre, during, or after. Don't forget to continue to love on them, and really the bit your 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 opportunity really follows once the loan closes or your deal closes, right? That the, the future opportunity for for the client and, and that relationship and the referrals and all that they can generate there is is really where the meat is uh, in in that. So well, I well I always maintain that for agents, the majority of the money is lost after the close. Oh it's, yeah, it's, we close and then we move on to the next deal and we forget we forget we that because that's where you make and so if you that's where you make all the money extra little bit of effort, whether it's an extra ten minutes every time you talk to them and really dig into their personal life and really love on them in that way. The future gain, I mean, talk about six years of possible referrals, six years of them buying and selling with you. I mean, all of that comes into it. Now, I saw some of these and I, I thought this is something we have to talk about. Phoenix saw the biggest jump in concessions. And in Phoenix, sellers gave concessions to buyers 62.9% of, of all home sales in the fourth quarter, which is up almost double, 33% <laughs> yeah. from a year earlier. Yeah. And so I still have agents asking me like, oh, well, you know, do you think I can ask for seller concessions? Yeah. Like, where have you been here? Like, like, <laughs> like this is what the market is dictating to us. And so, but, but, but for most financial on the financial side, most of us think that we're not going to be in this mortgage very long, right? If you think that rates are going to be improved in one, three, five years from now, then the reality is quote unquote financing in that seller concession into the price negotiation, 99.9% of the time, it makes financial sense to do that because you're not going to be in the mortgage long enough to remember 10 grand is like 50 bucks a month. So like to get 10 grand in closing cost credit and put that into your price, you're far better off financially doing it that way than the other. And 
it's nice to see that Phoenix was like leading the pack. I think San Diego was number one. Phoenix was number two. But like our agents, we get this, right? We're, we've been talking about it for darn near a year. So like hopefully it's sunken in and, and it seems to be as, as the market is generating that, right? 50, you know, 63% of us are, are, are getting deals where the seller is contributing. So, so that's a good thing. And then lastly, I'll leave you with inflation drives mortgage rates. And look at the correlation between inflation, which is represented by the, the orange number or the peach, it's core, uh, your consumer price index or CPI. And so look at the how that's tiered up. Really just look in July of 22 and on and see how it's fall, the rate or the, the inflation is falling and rates are following, right? So it, it, to, to me, this slide is perfect for those people that feel like, well, rates are going to continue to skyrocket in 23. If inflation follows, if, you're, if mortgage rates are following inflation, like this slide indicates, then this should take give you some comfort and give you confidence going into 23 to be really that education point to your client to say, listen, this is where rates are going. They're following inflation. And by the way, this week, inflation data comes out again for December on Thursday. So a good look to sign. Does that number go from a six headline to a five headline? Those are where, what I'll be looking at for on Thursday as that comes out. But those are, are like, this is, would be a great slide to talk to somebody who just thinks that the sky is going to continue to fall or, or that they believe that the Fed, uh, that the Fed actually, actually secures rates, right? Because people are like, well, the Fed's going to continue to raise rates. Well, that doesn't mean mortgage rates are going to continue to rise, right? It's inflation that really is what's really being keyed connected. on. So, so really good stuff to like help educate a client through a scenario. And then again, mastermind uh, that we do every uh, second Wednesday of every month. Still options if you want to join email marketing at booksmanbaker.com. And then lastly, I haven't talked about this a whole lot, but we do a $2,000 closing cost credit for a future refinance. Um, so if you purchase a home by April 1st of 23, we're given a $2,000 closing cost credit on a subsequent mortgage. You know, compliance didn't let me say refinance. They said <laughs> future transaction, but then Fairway came out and and now calls it a future, re, you know, now everyone's saying, oh, future refi. This is great. I'm like, so it's a really good um, kind of way to help a client through that. Like, hey, I, I know rates are high and guess what? The future to refinance is there and we're even trying to help you there in the future now. Uh, and, and hopefully that helps get them maybe moving, right? Get them off. The, yeah, off the I think this is key because one of the things that we're telling buyers right now, you know, take the rate now because you're going to get a really good deal on a home. This summer, you're not getting that home for that price. Exactly. So when rates do drop, if they drop, uh, then you refinance. And now you're already walking in with a with a little bit of credit. You got so, it. All right. All right. Thank Good you. Good stuff. All right. Uh, Pre thanks, appreciate it, Matt. Great stuff. All right. As we transition, uh, we are going to uh, uh, every year uh, we always bring it. Well, uh, we're not doing a we're not doing a three pack today. All right. So uh, every year we always bring in our uh, president and CEO, Clint Fouts, uh, kind of walk us through last year and get his thoughts uh, and his pulse on the market and what we could be and what we should be doing as agents. So uh, Clint, welcome. Happy New Year. Thank you, Mike. It's been a um, been a crazy year for the part. And um, so as most companies, let's jump right into the number 22, yeah, so the, the unit count um, at West USA was down by 20%. Um, the volume was down by 13%. And our commissions were down by 15%. And I know when Todd was kind of looking at those numbers and looking at the, the national or the, the national that the other companies, he can kind of step in and talk about what that looks like as compared to other companies. Yeah, they're, uh, uh, <clears throat> do you want to do that now or do you want to? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. You know, the, the big numbers always come out in April. So that's when you're starting to see Riz Media, Real Trends, and everybody start telling you what their, you know, bloated numbers are. Did I say that? Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody wants to look good. So, you know, they do everything they can to scrap for that. April is usually when that comes out. But right now, we always have a tendency by watching MLS and looking at, at the inventory of what's in MLS, what everybody else is earning. And right now, we're still trending ahead of the marketplace. Um, there was other offices that had uh, greater declines in unit counts. Um, obviously, there's people that work luxury markets. And so their markets are different than those markets that hit others. So I think the big thing, Clint and, and Mike, right now is uh, don't look at any number that you hear 
uh, unless you qualify specifically, you know, what market they're in. And then when you're talking to your client, what market are they in? <laughs> well, and, and I think also, guys, I think the important thing to note is, is, you know, I mean, numbers across the board are down for, for Correct. everybody. Um, but it doesn't mean that there is an opportunity out there because, because we have agents here at West USA that even though numbers are down and the market slowed for, for certain people last year, they're still killing it. And, and it's really a matter of not just throwing in the towel and saying, oh my gosh, uh, numbers are down and I'm not going to make it. It's really double downing and figuring out what these agents are doing to continue to be successful and implement that into your own business. That is very true. Um, jumping, <laughs> kind of jumping ahead, but we'll, I could cover that. In a so the agent count is next. We're st around 3,100 agents. We, we recruit about 50 agents a month on average. And that's to our agents. Our, our agents are our best referral source. It doesn't matter what we do here. If our agents were not referring us and doing it, and to that, we, we still give out a $100 credit. That's $25 on each transaction that they do until that agent caps for that year. Um, but it's an ongoing. Um, I know Mike still gets credits for agency recruits, and I know a lot of our agents do. I, I, you know, no matter how much money you make, it never gets old depositing checks, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and so every every month, you know, getting getting that check from West USA for the people that that we brought in, it's just it's it's just it's extra money. And I know some agents, you know, they're 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 getting, you know, checks every single month for three, four, five hundred dollars mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, they have a, a great experience with another agent on a cross sale and, and, and they bring them into West USA and they would bring them to West USA anyways, uh, but you might as well get a little bonus for it. Yeah, you know, I used to work at a company many, many years ago where uh, the, I, I would get paid on like profit share almost from from the offices. And the lack of the funny thing was, is we were like well, some of the top recruiters in, in the state, in the Southwest, actually. And and. <laughs> we didn't get checks every single time somebody came on board or something, you know, you had to wait. And if they didn't do any production, you didn't get anything. And and this is guaranteed. This is like a no brainer. Yeah. If it was yeah. a burger every yeah. month for every person oh, I brought go. in, I would probably be the top <laughs> recruiter here at West USA. So you guys need to change and it would save you money. <laughs> Very true. I just want to make sure everybody understood that too. A few years ago, we actually added a piece to that recruiting bonus when somebody recruits another agent, they get a hundred dollar credit instantly once that agent um, joins us on top of the $25 credit per transaction that the agent gets. So keep that in mind. That's been a huge push and a big piece of, I think, agents re recruiting. And we don't want every agent to be recruiters. We want you to go out and do it. But when you come yeah, across exactly. that cross sale and, and they're a good agent and they're complaining about maybe their production or what they can or can't pitch in because they can't afford to, you know, it's always great. hundred percent models out there. Todd sent me an um, article the other day about the percentage of people, and they're still nationally yeah. as a low production uh, per amount of people that are with 100% companies. Yeah, it was about 15%. It was, it's crazy. It's ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't I, think that's here in Arizona. No, that was I, national. But nationally, yeah. I think Arizona, because of the hotbed of the 100% companies, you're, you're looking at a much higher number, but yeah. still – there's a lot of company, people out there that have joined split shops that don't understand the difference, don't yeah. know what that looks like. Does They don't know what 100% looks like. Yeah. Um, and they, they're coming from another part of the country, moving to Arizona, and they were a realtor somewhere else. Uh, you know, you're thinking what you were thinking there, not Arizona. Exactly. You know? yeah. Well, there's, there's a lot to unravel. I think, I think the misconception is, especially for people coming from other states, is, oh, if I join a 100% company such as West USA – I'm not going to get the training. Support. I'm not going to get the support because it's a hundred percent company. And it could, that statement <laughs> couldn't be further from the truth uh, because I'm, I'm still sometimes overwhelmed with the amount of training and support. And, and we provide agents, uh, you know, you know, more training and support than a good number of the split shops out there. Yeah. So I think that's an important thing to note. And I think the other thing what agents are starting to see uh, with the turn in the market, I, I think a lot of the smaller boutique or mom and pop shops are really, really struggling. Mm -hmm. And um, I will just call them the profit sharing, multi-level marketing brokerages, whatever, whatever you want to call them out there. 
They they they're expensive to be at. Uh, and unless you're a full-time recruiter, uh, agents are finding it really very hard to be able to afford such a high cap. So let's just talk real quickly and just remind everybody of the benefits of West USA and the caps and the training and support. Yeah, it's one of the myths in the industry. They say don't go to 100% office because they don't offer anything. That's why they give you 100% because you have to pay for everything. And to your point, Mike, West USA has more services and support than any company that I can think of. Uh, and I don't care if you're talking about a 50-50 old original Century 21 concept. Yeah, we don't give you a red, white, and blue coat, but uh, but you get all the services and support that you need to make yourself successful. Well, and I think that's why we like to talk about our agent count and our referral credits at the same time, because a lot of the agents that are hiring with West USA, as Clint talked about, were referred by our realtors that are already with our brokerage. When you all are out there talking about the services and support and the 100% commission model that you receive at West USA, it's a no-brainer for the agents that may not understand that. So we can send emails and we can talk to agents, but you all having that conversation with the cross-sell agent or an agent that's a friend of yours at another brokerage, it's going to move the needle. And again, like we've already discussed, we're not asking you to go out there and bang phones. You send that information to our managers, to our recruiting team. We then have that conversation for you. So it's always a nice thing when Clint comes on to, to again, thank all of those agents within the last 12 months that referred agents to West USA. It's a really big deal for us. And in the end, think, rem think about it from this perspective. You're actually helping somebody in the industry. Industry. You're helping them keep more of their commission, uh, and and by the time they sit down with Mindy or whomever, the office manager, uh, they they feel confident that they're going to be able to make more money and get equal, if not better, support here. Yeah, and the amount of conversations I have with agents who are at other brokerages that have split shops, and I start going down. So, oh, so you don't get a mobile app? <laughs> oh, you got to use your title company's mobile app, and they get all your your uh, clients' information. Oh, you don't you don't get a free website. Oh, you don't have an onboarding concierge to help. I mean, like, <laughs> let's just, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, and, it, and it's a, and you're paying a lot more money. Yep. And for me, I, I think I could probably hire somebody for a lot less money to create an avatar for me. I do not need <laughs> an avatar to be successful in this business. <laughs> Very true. It's kind of funny because we had, I have multiple agents that, you get that first check and they're amazed about the check, but there was one story from way back and we had an agent come join us from a hundred or a hundred uh, split shop over the hundred percent. And they got their first check and they went to my dad and said, this is wrong. This is something we need to get this back. There's not, a, you know, there's no way. And my dad's like, no, that's right. That's what it's supposed to be. And that happens to be Bob Stevens when his first check before he came to work at corporate, but he just couldn't understand and believe that there was so much of his check was still there. Yeah. And, but it's kind of crazy, but, but that, looking forward, you know, there's enough about 2022. We're looking on to 2023. Um, West USA has been around, Nick, 23, 24 years, 23 years? Uh, 36 30, I'm years. sorry, 36 years. I'm that was sorry. a test. You, you had, I was a, trying you to had be a sabbatical. I was trying to be younger. <laughs> there was a period of time in the early 80s 30, that you, you, may, yeah. you might not have been checked in. We like to I'm test 30, my knowledge years, of West USA. Yeah, 36 years. <laughs> um, but, you know, out of everything we've seen, it's kind of funny because people kind of, question is West USA going to make it to this market? Is West USA going to do it? Are there companies or what companies are going on? And I will tell you that we have been through this market. You most likely have been through this market. You've been in real estate very long. There's really three markets that you're looking at. You have a buyer's market, a seller's market, and a neutral market. If you really look at it, well, maybe in betweens. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. As the switching, which is literally two and a half weeks yeah, to exactly. switch between one or the other. Yeah, don't blink. But when you think about it and, and you really got to look at your business. We looked at our business. My father set this business up. We knew there was going to be these markets. We knew there's going to be good. There's going to be bad. There's going to be all this other thing. And he has really set us up financially to make it through all of these markets. I try to let agents understand the same thing. You have to do the same thing yourselves. Absolutely. Your income is fluctuating up and down. If you're going to consistently pay yourself a paycheck, you need to set yourself up as business and you need to pay yourself at least as a check and what, I don't mean go out and set up. It's literally setting up a business account and having your money go into one a savings account and then transfer that check over. Now there's more capital ways of doing it for taxes and go over your um, account and then make sure you know best benefit for you. I won't get into that, but make it feel at least like a business and make it so you're making a paycheck. Your spouses will appreciate it. <laughs> if not, you will appreciate it. 
Yeah, that's you know what? That's probably some of the best advice that could have been given starting off the new year for a couple of reasons. But the most important reason is, do you know when your entity, your own LLC or PLLC, obviously, uh, pays you has to be a PLLC, but when it pays you you're no longer self-employed. Mm -hmm. You just saved yourself the self-employment tax. If you wanted a 10%, 14%, anywhere from an 8 to 12% uh, increase in your income this year, yep. stop being a self-employed agent. And yeah. yet you, that's just the difference. Yeah. Ha having, well, yeah, that's a whole nother it conversation, is, but, but having the right wow. accountant, yeah. uh, do, do turbo tax is not your savior. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, well, but you know, I, I love that, you know, the three different markets. We, we have a saying on our team that we talk about with our agents all the time. And it's a conversation that we have with all of our clients is money never disappears. Yeah, correct. It's always there. It just moves. Yeah. And so, you know, when you're, when you're thinking about the different markets, you know, obviously, uh, the last couple of years, the money, the money was working with seller, sellers. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that money's moved. And so, uh, you know, one of the, uh, the, one of the phrases that we adopted over COVID was you either pivot or perish. Yeah. And, and so I think as agents, and that's part of what we, our commitment, what we do every single Monday morning, not only by providing the stats, but providing just understanding of the differences in the different markets that you highlighted, Clint, and then how do you adapt to it? Uh, your business plan has to change. Yeah. You should probably have a business plan for every type of market. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to be able to pivot. And the only thing I could tell you is whatever market you're in, it's going to change. Mm -hmm. Whether it's good market, bad market, and your philosophy, it's, it's not going to stay there. So if you're in a bad market right now, it won't stay. It will move. Yeah. And to that same point, if you're, if, if uh, somebody's there are agents on the on one side of every transaction that closes. So the fact is, is that if if you're not selling anything, do, you know, kind of look in the mirror and see: Are you when you talk to people, are you down? Are you depressed? Are you in fear yourself of what's happening? Uh, because if you are, then you're that Debbie Downer. You're that negative person, and and you're going to stigmatize your own business. But on the other hand, if you identify you know, what those positive things are, and you don't allow the negativity to get in your head and kind of mess you up, then you're obviously going to be more of a beacon for people that want to do business. Well, I think it's, again, it's that mind shift, sh mindset shift that we talk about consistently hey, on mindset. here. Yeah. Uh, it, being a business owner, being an entrepreneur, that's what you need to be. And if you, if you look at your business, as you look at yourself as a business owner, you will be able to put those things into play and you'll constantly be studying the market. Those of you that are on today, uh, kudos to you. We probably don't need to preach to you. It's those that drop off when we start talking about business planning. Um, as soon as we get to that 930 and Mindy Thompson's on and you guys all click off, those are the ones that we may want to <laughs> poke a little bit. Uh, and just real quick, we had a lot of questions come in about the PLLC. We don't have anybody that we would recommend. Talk to a good CPA um, on, uh, and you can talk to other agents in your branch if they have set one up, but uh, I don't have anybody we can recommend for you. And make sure that the person that set your CPA does have real estate clients that have that they have set up those PLLCs, because yeah. if they don't, then they're just as ignorant well, as we are. I, I'm not sure whether I'm supposed to say this or not, but uh, my accountant is the best um, and she handles all this for me. So if you is that uh, your uh, wife? Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, that, no, she's other things. Uh, so uh, I, you know, I have I have a I have a great um, company that I work with. So if you want to reach out to me, um, I'd be happy just to send yeah. you their information. Um, so I, I, you know, I was kind of going down the rundown of the things that you wanted to talk about. So I'm going to shift gears here. And when, when I read this, I was like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I am so guilty of this because, uh, cause we're going to kind of talk about, cause you, you have the, uh, you get that 30,000 foot view that ages don't realize that every single day of your life. Um, you're talking with real estate agents and you're talking, Clint, with real estate agents that are succeeding. You're talking with real estate agents that are just kind of, you know, make, making it, make it, making it happen. Yep. And then you spend a lot of time talking with agents that are just really, really struggling. And, and so you, you always bring this insight into, you know, what you see are, are some of the things that we need to, as agents really improve upon. And one of the points here, uh, you had talked about, or you wanted to talk about is just as agents uh, with the shifting in market. And there's so much. The one thing that I think COVID gave us was 
everybody's desire and, and the availability to understanding market conditions and so many resources out there. I'm guilty of when I sit down with clients of bringing my knowledge and my understanding and kind of vomiting it all <laughs> upon them and, and so forth to try to, to yep. move the needle. And I probably don't do as well of a job as sitting there just asking the right questions and trying to figure out what their pain point is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, <laughs> It's like the um, fingernails on chalk was bored with, with me when I'm out with agents and we're having in people, to, you know, where they're at lunch or whatever it is, the waiter will come up and say, hey, how's the market? You guys are real estate. And I always kind of quiet, let the agent kind of take it on because that's always been, that's a customer at that point in time, in my opinion, a potential customer, right? I don't want to say anything with the agent sitting there. So I kind of walk back to the agent and, and literally, it just, it, it amazes me, but the agents will literally... Yeah, interest rates really high. Really, you know, I would hold and wait. Um, what's going on? I'm like, whoa, whoa yeah. what the heck? You know, and I just want to remember. And not all agents do this. There's been some agents that are really good at it and everything else, but probably more so than not. But if you find yourself one of those agents of of kind of just not, the, so the right answer to that question is is another question. What are you trying to accomplish? Because until you tell me that, I don't know how the market is. The market is different in every city. The market is different in every circumstance of the person's life, whether yeah. they're wanting an investment home, whether they're wanting their, their personal house. Um, so it's, it, as Matt was just saying, there's opportunities to refine everything else, but those all come into different plays. And until you ask that question of what are you trying to do? And if somebody says, well, I'm just wanting to know what the market is, it depends. That's the answer. What are you trying to do? There's no other conversation about the market other than that yeah. until they can you know, pinpoint what it is that they're, they're trying to do. I don't think you can help them. Um, so just make sure that when they're telling you, you know, are they paying cash? I remember one agent talking literally about the, <laughs> the person, about the interest rates and all the other stuff. Well, the guy finally walked away and says, well, I, I was looking at paying cash and then kind of walked away. I was like, <laughs> well, that was a much different conversation. Yeah, rates don't apply. <laughs> rates don't apply. Yeah. You know, who cares what the interest rate is? Is it a good time to purchase or not? And then the conversation was never had. How are they planning on paying for it? Um, so you just have to remind yourself questions, questions, questions. And sometimes the answer is a question. And until they can identify what they're trying to do, um, make sure you just don't talk to yourself. And, and unfortunately, I think it's a bigger piece because – when that person walks away with an expert telling them that it's time to hold, they go and tell 10 other people. And then the stigma comes out there that it's time to hold. And it may be, it may be the best device in the world at that particular time and moment for some people in some conditions, but you don't know who you're talking to and you don't know what the situation is or the situation they're talking to people about. It's probably um, the same, same thing, Clint. Um, like if somebody's at a listing appointment. Yeah. You know, and the fact is, is that, you know, you're maybe you're new, Mike, and, and the situation is you don't have a well oiled presentation or a PowerPoint or a set of documents to hand over. You're just brand new and you're and you're afraid of that listing appointment because you think you need to know everything to have a conversation with a seller. But the reality is, if you're a good person, if you have the ability to ask the right questions, you've just become the expert. You're better than if Todd Menard went into a listing appointment and wanted to spew all the market stats to somebody. People are going to disengage after about 30 seconds. It's too much. It's a fire hose. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is, is have the right question, ask them, and then just answer that or defer. Yeah, we're, we're working with a, with a couple right now. Uh, they're looking at selling their home and they're, you know, and I mean, we're, we just do this, you know, uh, you know, talk to us why you're, why you're, you know, cause we're on the listing appointment. Why are you selling your home? What's the motivation? Uh, because we can't get into pricing, uh, until motivation is everything. You have to know the motivation of the client. And then it came out that they are getting a divorce mm -hmm. and it's probably going to be somewhat of a, of an ugly divorce and they need to sell ASAP. And have we walked in there with like, hey, rates are high. Mm -hmm. You you should hold. I mean, <laughs> we wouldn't have a chance at, at we wouldn't have a chance at that listing. And you know, and uh, you know, we have that rule. You know, the seventy thirty rule. Uh, I break it all the time mm -hmm. um, because I find generally I find myself the most interesting person in the room. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's seventy percent of listening 
and 30% of talking. And, and I think that ratio evolves during the conversation, the, the initial part of the conversation. You, you're right, Clint. You just you got to ask the questions mm-hmm. and let them talk because you can't help them solve their problem or you can't help them solve their need until you know what the problem is and until you know what the need is. A lot of times those are two or three questions deep. Yeah. You don't get it up front. They give you the the facial or the yeah. facade up front, you know, and then you ask, the, you dig a little deeper in that same question, and all of a sudden they tell you the truth. And if you hadn't dug, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have been had as good a focus as if you know been able to properly answer the question. And I think Clinton hit it on the head too. The conversation that you're having, it's it's going to be passed along to that person's friends, family, their sphere of influence. Yeah, yeah. So if you're that positive realtor that was asking questions. It was simply kind of a an ear for these individuals to be able to bounce their concerns off of, have a good conversation with them. They're going to go to the person that they were talking to about this because they probably were talking to other people in their lives and go, you know what? I talked to this awesome realtor named Clint. He, he gave me a lot of good advice. If you're in that same situation, I'd definitely have that conversation. That, again, it's that business mindset. It's being able to have conversations, ask questions. And a lot of realtors we talk to right now with their success – they didn't do it with their business plan. What does success look like for 2023 for you guys this year? It's the same conversation you want to have with your clients. Yeah, I, I love the fact that they're going to tell other people. But if, you know, to your point, if you're being on purpose, uh, you know, and you want business to come from your client base, you have to give them something that they can share with somebody else. And I like what I heard Clint say was, here's my new answer to that. You know what? That's a great question. However, the answer to that question depends on what somebody's objective is and what their needs are and where that are going. Uh, here's what I would recommend. Why don't you tell them that I'd be happy to have a conversation with them, you know, or even if it's that person, you know, there's no way I'm going to be able to give you all the information you're really probably looking for. Why don't we plan to have a meeting uh, next week at, at say Tuesday at 11, <laughs> you know, make an appointment. That's, that's what I was just getting ready to get oh, into. No, 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 you're fine. Because <laughs> yeah. funny because this, there was an Irish person thinking back to an agent that was we would be out with. And every time that conversation come up at the marketplace, it was great. I'd be love to sit down and talk to you. When can you meet? It wasn't, I'm not going to have this discussion here at a restaurant. I'm not going to have a discussion walking through a grocery store, but Hey, we'd love to meet with you. Most of the time is, ah, thank you very much. And they walked away, but he literally got appointments. Yeah. And it, it was just a matter of how many times you ask and then how many times you get to ask. But yeah. yeah. Cause, cause I would think the, the right answer to the question is if you ask me how the market is, uh, I would probably, I mean, my normal response is, well, the market's actually incredible right now. Mm -hmm. And people go like, what? What does that mean? And then it gets into that deeper conversation. But probably, you know, a good response is, how's the market? Well, it just depends on who you are. For some people, the market's incredible. For some people, the market's not so incredible. Let me help you find out which camp you're in. Yeah. (laughs) Love it. That's true. It's, you know, we were talking about accountants too. You know, meet an accountant in a grocery store or something. Ask them how many, t- how much am I going to pay in taxes this year, and see what answer you get because they're going to say, "Well, come to my office and we'll sit down and we'll talk about that." Because yeah, <laughs> they're not going to be able to tell you how many tax, how much taxes are. Um, but yeah, it's it's you know just having those conversations, making sure that you're face to face and and not ans- asking answering questions that may not be asked because. You know, we perceive that they're asking is what the interest rate is. They didn't ask what the interest rate was. They asked how the market was. And that depends on where they were looking and what they're looking for. Um, well, I think we did, Nick, I think we did a three pack uh, sometime in December on this. Uh, I, I, for me, I don't, oh, I don't like to overcomplicate my business plan. Uh, I like to simplify it. If you Google business plan, you're going to want, you're <laughs> going to want to stick a shrimp fork in your eyeball, right? You're, you're not, I mean, it, it, it's so complicated. But, you know, I had, you know, I mean, 2022 is a pretty good year for, for, for me. Mm-hmm. I did pretty good. My business plan, my goal every day is to, and you set a daily goal, a weekly goal, a monthly goal, and a yearly goal is simply this. Uh, I don't, I don't put any money behind social media. I don't put any money into really any marketing because my marketing is just having real estate conversations with people because mm-hmm. uh, people don't want to talk to a realtor. That's my, my theory. But everybody yeah. wants to talk real estate. And that's why, you know, Todd, your stats and these webinars are so important mm-hmm. so that you can gather that knowledge. So no matter where that real estate conversation takes you, you're able to take it even further. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I really have is the, as Nick kind of gave me a, a deal, a heads up that we're putting out the annual survey. 
on January 23rd. The annual survey is an opportunity for you guys to tell us how bad Mike's doing. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> no, really, it's it's we want to know what we could do to improve. We want to know what, where, and what we we can do. Um, so please, I mean, it's great to get on there and see how great Mike is and everything else, but you don't necessarily need to do. We know how great he is, but as a company, um, we really look for the areas where we can improve. And unless you give us the honest answer, even if it's tough, give us an honest answer. Yeah, Let us know where we're yeah. going to improve. As we look at those, um, it is nice to see the 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 tens and the greats and the, you're awesome and all the other stuff. And you can give those too, but um, but make sure you're honest. Where there's pain points, let us know. Um, we always take a look at those, and that's how we plan our next year and looking forward to certain things we can do. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll have a lot more information uh, about that. And and I wanted to wrap up. I obviously, um, you know, your father Clay, the founder of West USA, uh, deeply missed. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we talk about these things today, and especially when you talk about the three different markets, you know, the buyer's market, seller's market, and that neutral market. How how would your dad approach this? I mean, what I mean, how did he as as because he used to sell real estate, right? Yep. How did you know what was his mindset? How did he last the test of time? I mean, he he'd been through the savings and loans. For, for, I mean, he he might have sold Abraham Lincoln's log cabin. I mean, I, you know, I I don't yeah. know, but I mean, let's talk a little bit, uh, you know, about his philosophy and his approach to real estate. Well, and he, had and a, he didn't have technology, yeah. right? No, he didn't. Yeah. He didn't. So he had a philosophy of, of literally, if, if you're not in a place where you're happy with your income, you're not working, you're just not working hard enough. There's an opportunity out there. It, 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 he just doesn't, I mean, agents can put in a, a, an abundance amount of time. And being able to, there was one time that he was, he felt was working as, as hardest as whatever it was, I mean, but his income wasn't there. So he literally did a timesheet and he did a timesheet. He went to the office, he had coffee, he talked to Joe, he talked to Bill, <laughs> he went to lunch, he talked to a couple more agents, went home and had a full day, but had nothing. It was never any money making activity. And he realized that after two days of doing a spreadsheet, he's like, I'm not doing anything. Yet. So he literally started blocking times and locking time and putting conversations like Mike said, but he felt like he was doing a lot of things. So I think a lot of agents kind of come in the same perspective. When the market shifts, maybe you're in a market where you're really good for your income and now your income's down um, and you're trying to figure out what to do to get that income back up. It's the amount of time you're spending on money making activities is the one thing that's going to change and get you out of that situation you're in. There's opportunities to make money out there. There really is. This was the greatest thing about real estate. Um, you just got to get the knowledge, get the education and, and teach yourself to have a conversations, the right conversations with people. And, um, and you're never selling anybody. He's, he's never once sold anybody. You're helping people. You're trying to totally. find people. I remember one time an agent asked him, um, what describe an agent? What is an agent? He says, waking up every morning unemployed that you're literally looking for the next job every single day. If you can handle that, you'll be a great real estate agent because that's exactly what you're doing. You're putting your resumes out. You're having conversations, you're talking, and you're looking for that next client to help. Well, I, I remember when I started with uh, West USA. I think I'm coming up on ten years now, mm -hmm. and uh, and we were we were at the uh, was it Bell Road in in Cave Creek yep. office, yep. and 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 there were there were several days where I was walking up those steps from lunch. He was walking down, going to lunch. He's like, "Did you eat?" I lied right to his face. Like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Cause, cause, <laughs> so we would go to lunch, and and the amount of knowledge of and that i still and and he didn't have technology and, and technology is never a replacement it's just an enhancement Correct. of of what you, we do as real estate agents every day but i, I remember the, just the one story he told me what he used to do and it just really stuck with me uh he didn't have a crm system so he had uh, these index cards and he had a rolodex as well which i know is in your it's your office, office. <laughs> yeah and so when he was in a certain area you know, he would, I don't know how he had those, those index cards organized, but he would just know, you know, who he potentially had or who he had sold a home to, whether it was a couple of years ago or six months ago, he would just pop in and, and say hello to them. And then he would say, you know, and he, you know, and he said sometimes to this day, but not as much now, but when I got out of production, mm -hmm. 
the amount of hearts that I had to break because my clients would call me and beg me to represent them. And he wasn't representing the clients anymore. It's, it's just, you know, I don't know if there's a lesson there, but it just, <laughs> I, you know, it's just, it's just good old fashioned yeah. hard work, building relationships with people. Your CRM system is not a relationship replacement. It's just an enhancement tool. Yeah. Well, I think agents on here that are, they're, concerned about having those real estate conversations that aren't confident in stopping by someone's house and just having that conversation. That's why this company was set up the way that it was. We have coaches, we have teams, you have support to figure out and to, to figure out the best way for you to learn how to have those conversations the way you would do them. You're not going to have the conversations the way Clay had the conversations. You need to figure out how you're going to do that. And we have the resources there to do those things for you. Because yeah, being able to listen to someone like Clay with the knowledge in his brain it's invaluable. We have people at the mm -hmm. company who would be more than happy to help give their knowledge to you. You know, it's funny. There's not any real realtors today that are that much more successful than realtors were in the 60s and 70s and 80s, truthfully. Um, obviously, you have to do half the amount of business to make the same kind of income <laughs> today. But uh, the issue really boils down to uh, you know, I asked them once a long, long time ago, Clint, when you and I were in the process of building the first uh, coaching program for West USA. And, and he said, and, you know, he, he asked me, he goes, so what's that all about? And, you know, he said, you know, cause he and I were having this conversation of don't confuse being busy with progress. And so meaning to you, what you just said. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, he came up, he says, he said, people don't need that many leads. People need to just calm down, be sincere, come from contribution, come from the point of why are you having this conversation with people? Realize that if you're not in your office with those people or not in their home, uh, away from all these distractions, they're probably not going to really be paying attention for very long. So what are you going to say in that very short period of time that gives you the opportunity to sit down with them to have a longer conversation at another time? And boy, you know what? <laughs> that kind of just opened a whole new book <laughs> because yep. people think they got to have a thousand leads a month. No, go to a coach, let the coach do an economic plan for you, help you with your business plan. It's free. We give you a free, or they give you a free hour of their life to be able to sit down and work with you on that economic spreadsheet. The goal is how do you know how many people you need to meet? You don't. Until you put down on a piece of paper and let the spreadsheet calculate how many people you have to have based on rules and numbers. Um, but it's amazing how many people think the job is so much more difficult than it really is. Go read the book, Making Friends and Influencing People. All right. Uh, parting words, Clint, as we wrap things up. Just keep working, keep the grind, and um, get your plans and your goals and um, work your hardest to get there. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it. And and to your point, Nick, I, I think it's a great idea. I mean, there, there's there's really not unless you, if you're achieving your goals and you're hitting it out of the ballpark, congratulations, you're obviously doing something right. So I would encourage you to find a platform to maybe give back uh, to agents that that could use your I, I hate this whole I'm keeping the secrets to myself and I'm not sharing. <laughs> yeah. it, it's it's bull crap. Uh, but if you're not. Um, at the very, 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 very least, um, take a moment, sit down with your office manager uh, and explore some of those opportunities out there. Uh, I always maintain and I think it's it's where I think it was the biggest detriment that we saw from COVID. I've always maintained isolation is the biggest career killer. Mm -hmm. If you are isolated and you sit at home and you're not part of a team or you don't have a coach or masterminding with other agents. I don't know how you make it in, in this business, but anyways, appreciate everybody joining us today. Clint, thank you very much. We look you, forward Clint. to a fantastic uh, 2023 and yep. uh, more burgers, right? We're all here more to burgers. help you too. If you need any yeah. help or don't find something, call us. Any one of us. We're yep. always here. All right. We'll leave everybody with the quote of the day. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says impossible. Possible. By um, Audrey Hepburn. I'm, I'm possible. I'm possible. I'm possible. My, oh, Goodness. I'm possible. I'm not a strong reader. <laughs> Let's do that again. That's Go not out. necessary to be successful in real Nothing estate, obviously. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says I'm possible. All right. Appreciate everybody joining us today. Go out and sell a home.